All right. Hey. Yo! <laughs> oh shit! All right, well, I guess I guess we start now. Let's get it. All right, what's going on? Self Objection, it's your boy Sherman. I have a very special guest here today. We got Full Mel Parkers in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get my DJ Envy going. <laughs> this nigga here. Nah, what's going on, brother? How you feeling, man? Cooling, bro, bro. Cooling. You already know. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you, man. So for those who don't know you, Mac, you just tell us who you are, what you do. Um, motherfucking Full Metal. Mm-hmm. Niggas know the name. Nah, it's bullshit. Motherfucking, I'm an artist, motherfucking videographer, motherfucking beat maker, goddamn philanthropist. Nah, <laughs> I do a little bit of everything, but niggas know okay. me for different shit. So, word, yeah. word. Okay, so so in your career of, of becoming an artist, um, I, I won't even say career, I guess in your journey of becoming an artist, facts. you've done many different things. So you started off initially uh, making beats, correct? Facts, facts, Okay, facts. so you started doing the beats thing, and then... I remember I had my clover line, you did some pictures for it, so you <laughs> yeah. was a, a photographer at some point, uh-huh. and then you started getting involved in videography and things like that, and then you became a full-blown artist, so mm-hmm. can you kind of just tell people how all that tied into you becoming who you are as an artist? In fact, yeah, it's kind of a long journey, so let's go ahead and get this history lesson popping. Okay. Um, motherfucking, in high school, around like 10th grade and shit, I was getting into like... I was going down the wrong path. Like, mm-hmm. shit was just not looking bright for my future. I was making the wrong decisions, fighting in some more shit. So, they started getting me involved in some after school shit and shit. And um, if niggas went to Woodside, if you went to Woodside, you know Mr. Skaggs. He the whole reason behind everything. Mm-hmm. This nigga here, I went to him for some after school shit one time to calm my nerves. <laughs> and uh, this nigga, he gave me Fruity Loop 7 on the disc. Like, this nigga just had it and shit. He was like, yeah, just fuck around with this, you know. Entertain your time and shit So I'm like alright So I got that Start fucking with it And from there Like it really had me Dabbling inside that shit Like I would play with it And just like Pause I would play <laughs> with the shit And like Just try to figure out the beat From that point on From mm. from like 10th grade on and shit Start making little Hip hop beats Or different types of Genre beats and shit And Pass it on to the niggas Around the school and shit That actually will rap So that's like the beat portion of that Okay So do you feel like the beat making kind of facilitated your your emotions in the sense so it allowed you to channel your emotions and, and what you were feeling and what you were going through into, Facts. into Hell yeah. music. Hell yeah. It okay. gave me something to do, something totally different and shit like that. And um, mm-hmm. I always fuck with music anyway, so that led me to go on like piano class and shit like that, guitar and like fucking with different instruments and shit, and it just helped me advance my beats. So that's how I went from there with that. Okay, word. That's what's up, man. So... And the photography portion, where that kind of stemmed from, messing with cameras and stuff like that, what kind of got you involved with that? Okay, let me see. So what the fuck? It was me and my nigga Jake during the time. Mm-hmm. We um, it basically ties in all that common ground shit for real, for real, because um, we basically like needed to have videos for niggas and shit. We mm-hmm. needed, we like boom, we need to get the group of artists, have them rapping on my beats and shit like that, push my beats. Push their music and shit But like they need music videos and shit So we like went half and half On a little beginning Nikon And shit like that And from that point It went from there I was like fucking with it It always stayed in my crib And shit like that So when I had the camera and shit I would fuck around with Just try to learn it inside out and shit mm-hmm. Then I started fucking with pictures and shit I fuck with females a lot and shit So you know I definitely want to try to get my pictures of them And they actually right. was going viral and shit Okay. And getting valid But you know what I'm saying So that's pretty much What led with there For photography And you know That dips into videography After a while Right right So yeah. in, in doing videography And stuff like that That you kind of decide to Because I've worked with you Before on some of your Music videos And stuff like that Do you feel like Doing the videography And stuff like that Do you feel like You had to rely on yourself To get it done the right way Because you knew The angles that you wanted And you knew how you wanted it set up So you figured Well if I want it done right I'm going to do it myself Or I'm going to explain it To somebody to have them Do it right In fact yeah To a certain extent Hell yeah Because um it's hard like that's like the main goal with anybody with a dream or idea or anything you want to copy it from your brain and paste it to the real world it's hard for niggas to see what's going on in your brain until you actually do it so that was my whole angle with that shit it's just like if i fuck around with it enough and just try these different things and shit like that like if you look at back at any old videos i did and shit before this shit got crazy heavy i was on the vhs shit from the jump out Mm -hmm. the gun like 2013 or some shit now like the like, vintage look yeah yeah that whole nostalgic shit like I always fuck with like VHS shit cause like that's how it was coming up so 
Hell yeah. So it definitely went into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that tied into my style and then fucking with like anime and video games and shit. I'm like, all right, as we do these niggas videos and shit, even when Jake, he would agree with the shit too. We was just like, you know, let's toss some of them old video game clips in it, some of that VHS shit in it, a whole bunch of like just nostalgia got shit during that time and mm-hmm. made that bitch pop. Okay, word. Yeah, and, and your music has a plethora of anime references, you know what I'm saying? Facts, like facts. you have you know, I mean, it's in your name, Full Metal Alchemist, you know, so so let's actually talk about your name and kind of dissect a little bit, so, because a lot of people might not know what Full Metal stands for, where it stems right, from, right, and, right. and the park is, is asphyxiation, not asphyxiation, the park is obsession, if you will. Right. Let's, let's just talk about that a little bit and, and give them some insight. All right, bet, bet. Um, so my first name, I ain't going to say what the hell my name was, <laughs> but my first name, that shit was corny as hell, so I needed mm-hmm. something new after I started developing my sound and shit and X, Y, Z. Right. So like I said, I got it from the anime itself. Everybody would know me for Full Metal, which is like F-U-L dash metal type shit, just to have it different. I ain't want to just spell like that and shit like that. Mm-hmm. That's what fucking with the anime. When I used to go to different local studios, all out Newport News and different shit, every mixer and engineer would fuck with my beats hard. Like, nigga, you made this? I'm like, yeah. Like, I made it. They couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. So when I was going around and I didn't have no name, I'm just like, it started reminding me of Full Metal Alchemist because this nigga, it, he would like, go around to different places transmutating and shit like that niggas couldn't believe he had them powers and shit like that so I'm right. like okay it ties together and shit cause I'm family oriented to a mm-hmm. certain extent so it's like I do it for those reasons and I fuck with the anime so and that was like one of the first ones I actually watched that was on some in depth ass shit so mm-hmm. that's what that strand from <clears throat> couldn't even talk for a second but boom <laughs> <laughs> okay no, nah, I feel you. that's actually really dope so that's man. the full metal part so boom as we did that shit it went long for years full metal beat ah, ah, ah. Mm-hmm. we did that for a grip and then motherfucking after a while, when I try to actually transition to the artist, like kind of name with it and shit. Mm-hmm. Um, when I fucking, when I would like search myself in different shit, it would always show up full metal jackets and shit. Like I'm trying to like get my fucking shit branded type shit. So I'm oh, trying to okay. see myself when I search it. Ah, ah, ah. And it always be full metal jackets. So I'm like, fuck this nigga. I'm tired of seeing that shit. I want to see my name pop up. So... I'm trying to switch it over to the Full Metal Parkers type shit. Something distinct, something that you can see mm-hmm. pop right out when you see it and shit like that. It's just like easy to search and there's nobody else like it and shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So that's how I pretty much went from that. I'm like, okay, let me toss a jacket over my name and shit. Put some swag on that shit. Add a dollar sign at the end. So it pretty much happened like that. <laughs> no, and that's dope because, I mean, different. I mean, and it's ironic that the Parkers started getting hot too. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you know, Supreme, their Parkers and stuff like that. Then, yeah. then they sent you a Parker. Someone sent you a Parker. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you plugged in. Yeah, keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, man. So, so you you are heavily heavily influenced by anime. Facts. So, is that would you say that's like some one of your influences? Like, let's talk about those. Like, what are some of your influences? Oh yeah, that's definitely that's the bread and butter for all my music and shit. Like my music ain't for everybody because if you ain't watching anime, especially with this whole new wave of culture, niggas trying to eat the eat the culture up, you mm-hmm. ain't gonna be hip. But that's definitely like the main source of it. All my punchlines and shit is gonna be over your head if you ain't watch X, Y, and Z. So right. I play a part of it, and it's different sounds. Like me producing, I used to make all different types of beats, like from R and B shit to Timberland vibe, Pharrell vibe, trap shit. Like niggas know the type of beats I made. Niggas heard the sounds and shit. Mm-hmm. So it's like a collaborative of that. I really fuck with R and B shit all the time. So I definitely apply that shit a lot. So that's why you'll get like. The chill vibes when you hear my shit. My Phoenix down. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit like that. So for sure. Okay, word. That's what's up, man. And in regards to anime, let's talk about uh your top five real quick. <laughs> oh man, this nigga here. I'm curious, man. On a spot, that shit is difficult. I can give you It a, is difficult. I can give you a personal top five, cause niggas ain't gonna chew me up. Not not in any <laughs> particular order. No particular order. And it's full metal, of course, like that goes down in it. Mm-hmm. Um Steins Gate is somewhere in it. Like that shit is just wild. So I put that bitch in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pushing through it right now. Word, I'm word. on like episode five. There you go. Motherfucking some OG shit, S Cry Ed. That's that's my shit right there. So mm-hmm. I fuck with that shit personally. Okay. Um, motherfucking Code Geass. Like I slept on that bitch for a grip and now I'm woke. <laughs> that's, so mad, that's so mad political, bro. Like, it is, but once you get trashed the bullshit, like they get yeah. right to it. And um, I don't know. It's hard to squeeze that five position in all the time and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna say Attack on Titan to play it safe for right now. Okay, yeah, just just the direction it's going. You yeah, can yeah, see it yeah, being yeah. Like one of yeah. The it's definitely fire and shit. Like mm-hmm. I got plenty. I got a list for days, but just awesome. squeezing that five off the top, then that's well, I, it right I'm there. I'm gonna tell you now. I read the manga, and it's definitely gonna be a top <laughs> yeah, five. Keep that manga shit to yourself. Anybody <laughs> watching this shit on that manga shit, 
Don't come my way with that shit. You get blocked. <laughs> get that ass banned. <laughs> Low <Low-tier>. tier. <laughs> okay, no, that's, that's a respectable list, man. That's that's dope. That's dope. I'm, I'm glad that you, you know, tie that into the music too, and, and just help further that culture. Cause I mean, anime is dope, man. A lot of people sleep on it, man. And I tell people there's there's an anime for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's all different genres of anime. If you like like crime, they got crime. They got gore. They got drama. They got you know, action. They got some soap opera type shit. Yeah, yeah, no, they got an anime for literally everybody. It's just sick that niggas is trying to eat the culture right now, and I got to speak on it. Like, mm-hmm. niggas got to slow down with it. Like, Definitely. That, that shit was a sacred thing. Niggas used to really get fucking bullied and fucked over with that shit and, like, made fun of, and now yep. that the world is fucking funneling down to little things that keep y'all asses entertained, y'all want to sit there and try to trench all over that. I'm going to let right. you know right now, if you're watching shit and you on some surface level, just Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, this shit... And think you in it, you not <laughs> like. Right. I'm sorry to say, like this nigga's way deeper in it. it ain't even about like reading or none of that shit. It's just like, it's a real culture. It's real people with shit like shit tying to people's life. People relate to that shit. It help mm-hmm. people through certain shit. Like, so Definitely. you gotta respect it and the people that was there first in it and shit. Don't just be coming over, mopping on it and using it for fucking advertisement or a way to get up just because it's a trendy thing at the moment. Like niggas know. Niggas know what's good with it from the jump, so absolutely. And oh, I yeah. feel like that was that was further pushed along, and I guess more widely accepted because you got artists like you know Lil Uzi, Meg The Stallion. You Word. Know, well, they'll reference anime sometimes in their in their lyrics and stuff like that. Because you know what, what you're starting to see now is like you starting to see the niggas like me in high school the whole way through. Nigga, I won't nobody in high school. Nigga, I was in the cut all the time. Niggas barely remember me. Type shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I was in the cut with the nerdy niggas, if you will. Playing the PSP, playing Yu-Gi-Oh cards, I, 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 doing shit like that. So it's like niggas like that are finally branching out. Like niggas that like was listening to rock music and shit like that and doing all different shit like that. Mm-hmm. They finally stepping out. And it's a lot of them niggas. So those niggas get the pass because you can really tell. The niggas that been there and been around people like that, you can tell they're in it. Absolutely. But you can tell the niggas that just bullshitting with it, just slapping it on their music just so it can look cool. But nigga, you ain't hip. Like you don't know what's going on. So Right, exactly. Yeah, definitely weed them out. No, that's, <laughs> no, that's facts, man. There's definitely a lot of a lot of culture vulture involved yeah, when it comes to anime, yeah. man. But... I think I think um I think it's it's good though I mean because I mean not the culture vulture part but I mean that is becoming more yeah, accepted. Yeah, I can't even hate on that. Yeah, it's definitely like spreading out more yeah. and like that's the only thing I like about it. It's like all right, niggas are watching some shit because some shit niggas need to really watch and like stop sleeping on because there's niggas that hate on it too mm-hmm. and be like you know it's cartoony, it's childish, ah 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 until you really like pay your ass attention. That shit is dark. And see bro. what time it get like it get crazy <laughs> for be, real. If you watch the right shit, it get crazy. They be on some they be on some dark shit for real. Hell yeah, man. some of that shit ties into some real life shit too. You mm-hmm. reading outside the lines, so hell yeah, absolutely, man. So let's talk about something that there's a lot of mystery around, man. So you have features. Your videos on Elevator, Yo yep. Jumper, you know, you've been on Lyrical Lemonade. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about how you got up there and, and what it was like um, seeing your, your itch, where you were at at your point in your career to where you could be on those platforms and what, what kind of feeling did that give you? All righty. For the ones tuning at home, this is the information that you want and need. Please pay attention. Motherfucking, I want to take the interview and take this time to actually try to guide people from this point from where I'm at. Because I ain't mm-hmm. too far, but I'm in a decent position. Mm-hmm. You really got to sit there and do your fucking homework and really tune in and be on top of shit, nigga. I started as a fucking producer. I, I rap, but I ain't no lyrical nigga, you know what I'm saying? I ain't no beast out here. I can't even fucking freestyle, come clean. Mm-hmm. motherfucking but there's no reason I should have made it this far like that's how easy it is if you do the right amount of work and shit so going into that like it starts with elevator first like during the time it's dead now so if you're trying to use this method to get it it's not gonna work but during this time it was um the PR services that's like on I got it through Twitter it's probably different ways you can do it but through Twitter and shit with different PR niggas you had to really take your bread and play with it like it was mad niggas offering the shit to get you on X, Y, and Z double mm-hmm. XL all type of this is 50 all type of shit like that and you really had to take your bread and just fucking chance it type shit so I'm taking every little bit of scratch I got not even eating type shit just to see what the fuck happened so that's how I got with the elevator shit when my mans put me on um, my mans Hef he got me straight. He no longer with the company. He doing shit with Alamo right now. Mm-hmm. But that's the nigga that got me with it. I tossed him some bread to do some PR shit. He was actually fucking with it and showed us to some nigga with some elevator shit. You know what I'm saying? And from there it took off. They were like, you know what I'm saying? You send in a video and we can post you up. So okay. I was like, boom, all right. So it started with that. I only thought it was going to be one from there. 
Mm-hmm. But then the owner's brother, you know what I'm saying? He was fucking with my shit. Like, just fucking with the anime, fucking with the game and my references and all that shit. And okay. they just fucked with me heavy from that point. So from there, it just been good for them. So that's how the whole elevated journey started. Shout out Brian, shout out Lamb, Hef, all them niggas. But yeah, so we still rocking from this point. They definitely got my whole shit going from that point for real for real okay so it gave you a a new level of exposure hell yeah hell yeah because it's like niggas out here don't still don't know me too well know my catalog of music too well but it's just like Mm -hmm. niggas in different locations know my shit and it definitely started with elevator first okay word and then from elevator went to lyrical lemonade no jumper no jumper was next so again another lesson for (laughs) (laughs) y'all motherfucking You got to pay attention. Straight up. You got to pay attention. Like, Mm -hmm. if you're really trying to get it, like, niggas be sitting at crib. Niggas be out here trying to be rappers or trying to get shit popping X, Y, and Z, but not doing the homework. Like, Mm -hmm. if you want to get on No Jumper or fucking anything that you're trying to get on, that's the only thing you need to be focused on 24-7 type shit. Right. So, I was just on it. I'm just like, I'm looking at different artists that's, like, damn near my tier, a different level. Because to even backtrack a little bit, when I was on fucking Elevator and shit, when I first started getting posted up there, that's when Lil Zan was first posted up there and shit. Before he popped, mm-hmm. he was up there and shit. So that nigga. Is that play on words? <laughs> this nigga here. <laughs> Lil Zan before he popped. <laughs> nah, that was some good shit. <laughs> nah, this motherfucker here, he was just like, you know, hitting like 60K to 100K type shit. He was a little bit more up than me, but shit. Mm-hmm. But he was still just getting posted on Elevator and trying to get his shit to pop. So that nigga was even hitting me like, yo, your shit fire. Ah, ah, ah. We got to do something. Woo, woo, woo. Mm-hmm. So. With that being said, it's just like, nigga, it was just doing your homework during that time and shit. So, moving on from that, I paid attention. Motherfucking, uh, with the no jumper shit, I was just paying attention to everything I had him doing because I'm seeing niggas on the level of where I should be at next type shit. I was seeing like artists like that. I'm like, okay, if they can get it, I should be able to get it because mm-hmm. we about neck and neck with the views and fucking social media following. Ah, ah, ah. So, let's give that a shot and shit. So, I did my homework. I paid attention. And this nigga Adam was on some shit. First, it started with some shit. He did it and he stopped doing it. But it started with some shit, an app called Cameo or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. That shit, you toss niggas like $30, 40 or whatever like that, and they'll give you a shout out. Just like on some happy birthday shit, shout you out, whatever like that. So okay. I'm like, okay, I'm going to take this bread and tell this nigga just listen to my shit real quick. Mm-hmm. And it worked. <laughs> like, <laughs> So he listened to it. like, oh, I'm fucking with this. Ah, 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 cool. So my game plan from that point was like, all right, I got to stay consistent and get this nigga to memorize my name like you gotta understand like you gotta constantly hear it here and be like damn i heard that shit from somewhere before right because so, i decided on the mind hell yeah so from that point it went to um he started doing his live streams and shit mm-hmm. now the live streams like again if you're trying to follow this method it's gonna be it's gonna be even harder but the live streams he go up there and listen to niggas music and shit during the time i was doing this shit was only 50 dollars mm-hmm. like 30 or 50 dollars one around that price and shit so I have my different songs that I had on Elevator and different shit, and I'll pay on that shit every time he go live type shit. So I'll give him, toss him 30, toss him to 50, he listened to it and shit. And it was one time with my man's Don, we was like high as fuck at his crib one time, and we was like, we ain't niggas ain't had no bread. Niggas was just like, yo, we gonna change the last bit of bread, fuck it, like, we gonna see what happened. Mm-hmm. And it was the Falcon Punch song and shit, it was like three of them niggas in there and shit. And them niggas was like, they were listening to the shit, like they took it on and shit, and Everything just stopped. Like, all three of them stopped at the same time and zoned out to the song type shit. Started rocking to it. And this nigga Adam was like, well, you know what we do with songs that you like? And they reposted the shit. So from that point, I'm like, okay, we making some movement. We doing right. something. This is just a song. This is before getting a video type poster type shit. Mm-hmm. So at that time, come along and shit like that, we suit. I, I, I keep it pushing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep on applying pressure. So I'm like dropping videos on Elevator back to back and I'm like okay I'm gonna show these niggas and try to get a video up there mm-hmm. so after a while spending hella bread back and forth and the price went from like $30 to $100 for per view type shit for him to see it and then on top of that it's like it's not guaranteed they're gonna fuck with your shit it been plenty of times I've seen niggas up there they drop that $100 to get their shit watched and these niggas are just getting smacked and barely paying attention to the song and they be like oh this was cool and then click to the next shit your hundred dollars just went down the drain, but you got to play with the money to do it. Right. So I did that back and forth. I took some L's with them too. Like they just like, oh, that was cool, and kept it pushing. But mm-hmm. you had to apply that pressure. So after a while, I finally got that hit up. Like, okay, you can send some shit in, and we will post it up. So after I got that hit up, it was water from that. <laughs> okay, water, yeah. water. Okay, that's dope, man. Because a lot of people don't 
understand that there's a, a certain level of tenacity that you have to have when you're trying to be successful when you're Facts. trying to get your stuff to pop you have to be consistent you have to keep on attacking because like like we said earlier you know out of sight out of mind because people forget yeah. real quick you know what i'm saying like you post something up it might be hot for a little bit but if you don't make it consistent mm-hmm. then you're just gonna be like a one-hit wonder or or gone with the wind essentially you know what word I'm saying? and that nigga um, that artist uh russ that mm-hmm. nigga, he was kind of giving insight on that too, because even during my journey, trying to get it, still trying to get it now, but even during mm-hmm. my journey, I remember seeing him constantly posting shit up on all these blogs, constantly seeing him. I see him World Star submitted. He got bread to do World Star shit, but right. World Star submitted all that. He just kept on putting his name, put his name, put his name until it worked. And he mm-hmm. he said that in his interviews and shit himself, that that's what he did. So, you know what I'm saying? It's definitely proof in the pudding type shit if you do it but it's almost like speaking yourself into existence hell yeah it's like working out for real for real in a sense my nigga like it's gonna hurt after a while but you're gonna make gains after mm-hmm. you hurt so you know what i'm saying it's gonna be easy so no that's facts bro that's facts so let's yeah so that's a no jumping one <laughs> okay and then how did how did the lyrical lemonade one come oh, that about? was just some simple shit for real for real um mm-hmm. after they saw like the no jumper clout basically they ran with that and mm-hmm. had the writers hitting me up and like yeah you can send some shit in uh so i was like cool i sent that shit in and did it like that and um Tying back to Elevator, Elevator had offered me some shit with motherfucking uh, Hypnotic, too. Like mm-hmm. the alcohol drink and shit. So right. that definitely gave me the clout leverage, <laughs> in mm-hmm. a sense. And shit, that helped me balance it out and shit like that. So With the, with the Hypnotic, you had submitted a song with Hypnotic, referencing the song, correct? And then you got like a, a deal with Hypnotic? Basically, basically. They okay. hit me with some shit like that. They hit me like, yo... We about to do this hypnotic collab, first time ever type shit. It's gonna be you and X amount of artists, which a lot of these artists I was on the tape with are actually popping, mm-hmm. like Valley or Valet, whatever the announce his name. Mm-hmm. He popping right now, a whole bunch of niggas. But regardless, yeah, hit me up and was like, yeah, we got this shit. We want you to send in a song. We'll toss you X amount of bread type shit, which was very good for me at the moment. Mm-hmm. And hit me with that shit. And we made it like that. Then they had a little party in New York and we popped up to the release party type shit. Had our names and shit everywhere. It was definitely valid. Okay, word. Well, that's what's up, man. Yeah. That, that was a, that was did you kind of feel like you were on your way up after experiencing that? Yeah, it was definitely uh motherfucking like a landmine, like a motherfucking I can't think of the word right now. Like a fucking uh the next notch. I can't think of the word, but mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I'll feel you. It was definitely like the next thing I needed right there, and I got to meet people and shit. Like I actually met the fucking president of Hypnotic, like oh, damn. dancing with her. She got video like with me and all that shit, cause she really, they really, really fuck with my song, like hard body. Like mm-hmm. they spent it back a couple times. That's like no oh, gas yeah. or no arrogant shit or nothing like that. Mm-hmm. They was really fucking with that shit. So motherfuckers, like that shit was cool. Like <laughs> okay, word, well, that's what's up, bro. So we just talk about the lyrical lemonade and stuff like that, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ski Max has a lot of workings with uh, Lyrical Lemonade. So, um And you actually produced a, a song for him on his book of Eli, correct? Yeah, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about that and, and what that process was like, how he, how he reached out to you and and what you were feeling when he did reach out to you. Facts. Um, so that previous night, like at 3 a.m., I was just on some shit. I was like, let me go ahead and sample some shit or something real quick. Mm-hmm. So I took that Timberland shit because I'm like, all right, I'm seeing a wave in times and how shit is. I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and attack this real quick before somebody else try to get it. So I took that shit. I made that beat in like two or three minutes, like mm-hmm. super fast, like done type shit. So I was just on some shits and giggles shit. I'm like, let me go ahead and like post a video up on Twitter type shit and try to get this nigga ski mask on it because it sounds like some shit he'll be on. So I was just like mm-hmm. made the video real quick. I'm like, yo, you should flow on this shit. I, 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 I ain't think nothing of it. Went about my day and shit. I probably going to delete the shit after a while mm-hmm. and shit. But um, I was chilling in the crib. Next thing I know, I see this nigga ski mask follow me. I'm like, oh shit! And I showed this to my brothers and shit like that. I was a little souped up. Mm-hmm. And then motherfucking the nigga DM me like, yo, send me that beat now. So I'm like, shit, you got it, B. I'm like, and I hit him with the email and shit. I'm like, yeah, I don't even want no bread for it, nothing. Just you know what I'm saying, give me the credit and we good and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So I went from there. He posted it up. After he got the beat, I ain't know if we were going to hear it from him because niggas get beat sometimes and niggas don't rap on it and shit. I mean, the follow was good enough for me. Right. But um, after he got that shit, that's when he put the clip up and the clip started going crazy viral and shit. Like, everybody around the world wanted that shit when it fucking happened. Mm-hmm. And I was suit too because I'm like, nigga, that's my beat. And I made that shit in like two seconds. So it's like, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I was hella suit. So he did that and shit and he had dropped it or whatever case with me or put the track list out mm-hmm. and that's when it got a little sticky and shit because it's like produced by Timberland and shit. I wasn't tripping too hard on it for real, for real. I'm like, 
I'm just trying to get I was trying to get in a little fucking contact with him or his clarification like alright nigga you, you kind of fucked up with that track list and like I made that beat I understand it's Timberland beat and it's not too much that I changed on it but I did send you that you hit me up for it that's the way it was but it was never no ill will on mm-hmm. the shit and after a while I did get corrected like one of his mans hit me up and was like oh shit my bad man you made that shit we'll change the name right now so you go on SoundCloud now a million views with my name produced by it so <laughs> okay hell yeah so okay yeah, with water. okay that's dope man so how how I mean, just what was what was that feeling like? You know, like did you feel like, damn, this is like my breakthrough right here? Like you actually got in contact with somebody that actually like put your beat out there and, and people were actually fucking with like See, I be having so much shit going on. I be having mm-hmm. thinking so much in advance and having so many plans and shit. I'm just like, Okay, this is just another one in the back pocket that if something happened then mm-hmm. it can go from there. But I try not to get too soup or fucking star stunned at all because these people are regular people at the end of the day type Absolutely. shit. Absolutely. So I wasn't tripping too hard. I'm just like, okay, let me send this beat immediately, nigga. Like, stop anything I'm doing and send this beat. Mm. And once I saw it up, I'm just like, oh, yeah, this is fire type shit. And niggas were tagging me, telling me I produced it and shit like that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But it was definitely a good feeling. Like, I got one under my belt for producing this shit. And you know what I'm saying? My whole main thing, just tying back to being an artist and shit, it was like when I decided to be an artist, I was like, nigga, I just want niggas to hit my beats because it's hard for producers to get bread unless you make a fucking hit single, right. like a fucking banger around the world. It's hard to get that good bread where you living good because it'd be hella producers out here that's legends and still living locally kind of shit. So right. I didn't want to end up in a situation like that. I really wanted a break. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start rapping on my beats and shit like that because I told myself all the time, every great producer raps at one point. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I always said that shit. And I'm like, okay. It's time to fucking do it. So from there, that's how that happened with that. And you know what I'm saying? And I told myself, like, even with doing videos and shit, I'm like, if niggas don't fuck with the motherfucking, the track itself, the raps, but niggas say the beat hot, nigga, I did the beat. Niggas don't fuck with the beat or the track, but the video dope, nigga, I did the video. So it's like. Right. <laughs> so it's a bitch of poison. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What you want to do? Like, okay. <laughs> facts. Word, I feel you on that, bro. So when we talking about, um, being an artist and doing your music and things like that, obviously there's, there comes a point where you have to do performances. So let's talk about some some of the local performances you've done and, and what's your opinion on uh, performing uh, just in the 757 area at least. So I only performed like three times. I mean, the first one was pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. First experience, a little nervous. Actually, I might have did four. But all I can remember is three right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Motherfucking, um, it was definitely lit for the first experience of it and shit like that. I was new to it. You know, um, I'm record, I record with Boris and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So he kind of like pulled me into that. He been doing all that shit and everything. So he pulled me into his crowd of peoples and shit. And he he good with spreading the word of good music if he actually fuck with this shit. So mm-hmm. he got niggas to actually fuck with me and rock with me. And niggas is like, it took off from there. But it's a good experience for the first go round if you do it. But to me personally, it's like I have no interest or ties in performing out here too much for real for real. And that's not like not feeding the state type shit or being on some arrogant shit. Mm. My whole goal is to fucking kick down the door and get all the artists out this bitch to get right. I'm mm. trying to lead them in that direction. You know what I'm saying? You know they keep on saying the fucking crabs in the barrel scenario type shit, which it is to right. an extent, but I'm like, all right, this nigga right here is about to just maneuver his whole way, not team up with nobody. I'm about to just do my own idea, and once I make it to the top of that barrel, then I'll get everybody out. Mm-hmm. Now the problem is out here niggas don't be trusting motherfuckers and shit just due to history and shit niggas break and really never come back and feed niggas the way they need to be fed. Right. Niggas will come back and do little shit here and there and Pharrell's tapping into it now and Push always been around you know what I'm saying but niggas need to be fed a certain way mm-hmm. type shit so I'm trying to like break it that way so it's like time back not to go on a tangent type shit but time back to like just doing local performances it's like it's, it does nothing for me personally mm-hmm. type shit. After a while for everything I've experienced you see the same crowd of people that you've been at your shows already. You know what I'm saying? You bring right. in your crowd. So if you're not really hot like that, like me, my shit all on the internet. I'm taking over the internet type shit. That's the goal. Mm-hmm. And niggas is all across the motherfucking states in the world and shit. Everybody here don't fuck with my shit that hard. So actually trying to pull a crowd to come out and see me is going to be the same people where I'm bringing my own crowd, mm-hmm. which I'm making my own niggas pay to come in and then taking their bread because niggas toss me some bread for performing type shit and I got their bread so that shit feel a little grimy right. to me so it's just like ain't no point in doing this I'm not getting no exposure like mm-hmm. and I, I definitely appreciate and humbled by every opportunity I got to perform by X, Y, and Z but it just does nothing for me like I don't see no social media leverage I don't see anything if anything it's good to have video clips 
to like flex around with on fucking social media to make it seem like you're doing something good, which is a strategy mm-hmm. in this game, but yeah, definitely. It ain't for me. <laughs> okay, no, I feel you on that. So you, so you don't feel like it hurts your your image at all because nah. you have your your majority of your support comes from the internet and uh, people that honestly don't really even know you. Yeah, I mean, it only hurts a little bit because if anybody out here thinking I'm just on some like too good to perform type shit or some shit mm-hmm. like that, like I'm not on that time at all. I'm like performing at any like diners or bars or little stuff like that it's not going to do anything for me mm. at all like I've, I've tried it i've done it like it does nothing i go home same amount of followers no extra no new fans it's like the same faces i'm like i'm performing i might as well be performing in my living room for my <laughs> like my people or some <laughs> shit like that like no i feel that it's man. a waste of time i'd rather do something else with my time that's what i'm saying in a <laughs> okay sense, no, sure. I, I, I unless it's like super duper beneficial like they offer me some shit something in the water some shit Boom! Like you see the crowd, you see the turnout, you see how it is. But absolutely, anything locally, I get it. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely always down to help to use my name to bring extra crowd leverage and shit. But it don't always work like that. So okay, I feel that man. So let's talk about. Uh, have you done anything at the Norva before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. well, yeah, I was supposed to. <laughs> I was supposed to, man. No, Shout out to with that. So man, I wasn't feeling the vibes, bro. I'm come clean. I was not feeling the vibe. I told him that. Shout out to Breeze Park and mm-hmm. Boris and all them for inviting me on. But when we got there. Like, it was kind of like, it was a event that I think the Breeze Park homies threw type mm-hmm. shit. But we on their side of the water, too, at that. But they all, they just wanted to see them. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. so by the time for, for me to perform, once again, I'm performing for niggas I brought. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The main crowd of people is not going to come to later on when the Breeze Park niggas perform, which is not a problem. That's their crowd and everything like that. But right. you know what I'm saying? It, it's just like, what am I performing for? Like, mm-hmm. I'm literally looking at the crowd. And seeing everybody I brought and maybe, like, two new people that really don't care. They over there getting a drink or some shit. Like, mm. so I'm sitting there like, mm, I'm not about to just sit here and do this shit. I'm like, I ain't even take the bread back and I'm like, y'all can keep the bread that we pay for and everything. We just about to be out. Like, I ain't about to waste my time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Show ended up being great for them afterwards. Like, I saw the footage and everything and shit. And I let them know. I text them. Like, I just wasn't feeling it. Mm. But that's how that situation went. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to. It's headline type different deals and shit like that. And you got to have that leverage. They've been out here doing it for a grip, killing shit for a grip. Like, they probably don't even know. Um, one time when we had the Common Ground shit, had these niggas, um, niggas was opening for Father and them and shit. I was in the crowd during that time. I didn't even know who they was. It was my first time ever seeing these niggas. Like, mm-hmm. they were kind of younger too. But they was like one of the last people to perform. And when they performed, they fucked it up. Like, fucked it up crazy. You know what I'm saying? Niggas crowd service and more shit. I'm like, damn, who these niggas is? So, mm-hmm. Tying that back in, I knew they had that side on lock from a long time ago. So right. it was only right for the crowd to be right for them mm-hmm. and whatever for me. So that's why I just pieced out of that situation. Okay. No, I feel, yeah. I feel you on that. I, feel <laughs> that. I mean, I, yeah, and I'm a huge proponent of that too. I ain't trying to waste my time on yeah, that. Yeah, man. You know time is important. Yeah. And it's a business movie at the end of the day. I'm sure they understood. You know yeah, yeah. They sure was a, I don't think nobody got no ill will and yeah. shit. Shout out Ty, everybody, Cam, all of them. Okay. Word, word. That's what's up, man. So let's talk about some of your music, man. Let's talk about, I guess, what your most popping song is what the most popular song is that you have like what are people really rocking with the fucking death city <laughs> oh my <laughs> god <laughs> can't escape that shit bro <laughs> do you feel like that that i mean do you do you not like the song or you, or you just do you feel like you have more products that are better than that you want people to see what you have that's better nah nah i definitely love the song it's definitely fire shout out mm-hmm. to my man jamil for putting me on and making me make that hit excuse me but that shit has grown bigger than me. Like, <laughs> the song has a cult following itself. Like, mm-hmm. this shit just, like, it's just one of those shits that got bigger than me. It's like, everybody always wants to hear it and play it. And the shit two years old now. And I'm like, right. you know, I'm past that point now. It's definitely, I guess it would be a classic for me. <laughs> but you know what I'm right. saying? Um, yeah, I'm just past that point with that song. That's all. Okay. But that's definitely the biggest one. One okay. of the bigger ones. So you rock with a song, but you, you also want people to, to hear your new stuff too. Yeah, and, and yeah about because the new stuff you got. Definitely versatile and some more shit. So mm-hmm. I make whole different types of shit. So Okay. Well yeah. I feel you on that. And then Phoenix Down, you just shot the music video for that. Yeah. And then you have you finished editing it, correct? It's in the process right now, but trust okay. me, that shit is <laughs> yeah. that shit is flame. It's probably the best video ever done. By me. Okay. I yeah. seen a sneak peek. Well, so. not by me. Edited, I edited some shit, but shout mm. out Spencer and Tyler. They held it down. Them niggas was on their way on the next Cole Bennett type shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Word. Yeah, no, nah, I've seen some of Spencer's work and, and, and his too. It's, it's crazy. Like yeah. just the, the footage and everything. Like I saw some, some sneak previews of your video and... It, they're not. They're not ready for it. Man. That shit. <laughs> they're that not shit ready. Is crazy, for it. That shit is crazy. Bro. 
Like, that shit is insane, man. I was looking, I was like, yo, this shit is insane. I can't believe it myself, for real. Shout out that anime mom, too. Had her up in that. <laughs> yeah, no, facts, man. So, in regards to Phoenix Down, that's going to be on your upcoming project, Memory Cards, as OST, original soundtrack, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. What went into the process of making that? That um, Is it an LP or album? Uh, man, I'm trying to do this new thing, just calling them OSTs, man, because I get okay. tired of, like, EP. Then, like, if you didn't catch on to the trend, I don't like doing what everybody doing. Like, mm-hmm. that Max B shit, niggas is over there. I'm, I'm going across the street over here type shit. Like, okay. I don't be with what everybody doing. Okay. And I saw EP being a lot of trendy and shit. I'm like, uh, mm-hmm. I'll do something short real quick, but I'm going to call it an OST and shit just because – Anime background, I fuck with and shit. All I used to listen to before hip hop shit was a whole bunch of Japanese music and K pop and shit mm-hmm. like that. So and with a whole bunch of OSTs for different animes and shit. So right, I'm like I'm gonna just title all my shit OSTs, like everything I do. So I had the designer and mecha OST. That was the first shit I dropped. Mm-hmm. Then the teenage rage OST, and now it's memory cards OST. <laughs> okay, and how how many tracks are on this album? Just five. Just five. five. Yeah. Okay, so some something quick, but... some slight. Thirty okay. minutes. <laughs> Okay. Well, so, I mean, it's it's a it's a little tease as far as as, as what you had to offer. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, man. We we still kind of in the microwave phase just a little bit. So I definitely want to feed it to those people that want mm-hmm. that quick music real quick. Okay. Okay. Word up for you on that. And these these music these musics ah. <laughs> these songs that you chose for this actual project. How did you go through the selection process? Like, what was your process of elimination? Like, I want this song, or I don't want this song, or I'm feeling this song, or did it kind of change based on how you was feeling at the time? Oh yeah, yeah, it definitely changed how I was feeling at the time. Um, I just my main goal was like I want every single one to be a hit. I want every mm-hmm. single one to just be like some shit niggas would fuck with hard body. So that was my whole process with that, just picking that and then you know just playing on the name. I wanted some type of nostalgic feel on each track, but not that general bullshit nostalgia that that been played out. I'm want to get to the next level of nostalgia type shit, and I think I tapped into it with this project just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, with sound and the sample choice and all that shit, you're gonna find out next week or okay. whenever we get this on. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bet, bet. So, so release day is is gonna be July seventh. That's next Friday. From this day, yeah, I think it's July seventh. That's what we going for. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> no, I got confused. My days are starting to like blend together. And shit. I feel you on that. <laughs> I feel you. Okay. Okay. Word, man. That's what's up. So, where can people find you as far as social media is concerned? Motherfucking Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll be on Instagram more. My Twitter is just like, uh, right now. Mm-hmm. My Instagram has been moving a little bit better, so I'm up there more than Twitter. For okay. real, for real. And, you know, we can talk anime all day. <laughs> right, there, right. You know what I'm saying? So, what's your, uh, what's your handles, though? Like, uh, Oh, motherfucking just Full Metal Parkers on Instagram. Where's my Parker on Twitter? SoundCloud. Full okay. Metal Parkers. You know what I'm saying? One L in Full Metal. Okay. S, a, S or dollar sign at the end? S, just S. They don't let you do the dollar signs on the gram. <laughs> Those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, word. That's what's up, man. Well, hey, I appreciate your time, man. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, before we wrap up, man, you got anything else that you want to add? Yeah, man. Um, Let me see. Everybody out there trying to do it, just brand yourself. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even talking from a higher place. I'm just trying to help. You got to definitely brand yourself. Mm-hmm. You gotta tune in Like if you You gotta kill some of that Social media shit That's what be fucking niggas up For real for real Niggas be up there following Hella IG bitches Following little shit That just take up your brain time And you, by the time you know it, It's the end of the day Like you gotta really just ch- Fucking pick and choose What you wanna focus on As far as physically seeing On your social networks and shit So I definitely tell niggas To focus a little bit more Focus on branding yourself If you are trying to be an artist Cause that's what they are looking for Like that professionalism and mm-hmm. shit And really just coming clean like that What else I wanna add Motherfucking Stop DMing me <laughs> Please <laughs> Please I cannot get you on Elevator I cannot get you on No Jumper I cannot get you on Lyrical Lemonade All you can do is put in the work I've gave you the tips Inside the shit So please Use that as to your best abilities If you wanna send me beats My email is in all my bios You can send me beats there But I make my own beats So I really ain't pressed for beats Like that other than that, it's peace and love, you dig? Virginia way, I'm trying to do it for Virginia. I don't care about nothing else. I don't want to be rich. I want to help niggas out, and that's it, and watch anime and possibly pass away. I don't think I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully not, man. But, hey, 
All right, Warrior, I appreciate you for coming out, man. You know, yeah, give my yeah. platform the, the time of day, man, because this is your, your first interview, correct? First one ever, and I bless Sherman with it. <laughs> <laughs> and now I appreciate you, brother, man. Definitely, man. You know, it's all love over here, man. And, you know, keep doing what you're doing for the Five Seven, man, you know, because you're on the way up. And, and I think that if anybody's going to make it out of here, it's definitely going to be you. Uh, so, you know, just keep on being tenacious, man. Keep on going at it, man. And, you know, you're going to be all right. Bang, bang. All right, everybody, make sure y'all listen to the Full Metal Parkers. He's on all streaming platforms. Make sure y'all keep your eyes out for Memory Cards OST coming out next Friday, July yeah. 7th. Make sure y'all follow him on all social media. He's aye, hella aye. dope. He's out here killing the game. He's doing the damn thing. All right, brother, I appreciate you, man. Yeah, yeah. You going to support <laughs> out again? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm going. Seth, I'll check shit out.